Hello, I'm Yasser Janab, interventional cardiologist from Tehran Heart Center, presenting the case Inflow Improvement by Catheter Directed Thrombolysis in Venous Stenting. Our case is a 60 year old woman with extensive iliofemoral deep vein thrombosis from about 5 days ago with no risk factor for deep vein thrombosis. It's a venography shows patent IVC in front of at this part but at the distal part you can see small thrombosis protruding to inferior vena cava and and here you can see the occluded left common iliac vein and here you can see again the enlarged occluded left common iliac vein and patent right common iliac vein Occluded left common femoral vein, occluded superficial Christophanus vein, and even thrombotic occlusion of left deep femoral vein. And even occluded left superficial femoral veins. In coronal views, you can see a slight protrusion of clot into inferior vena cava here, and as we saw, thrombotic occlusion of left common iliac veins. Venography and catheter directed thrombolysis in prone position from popliteal vein axis under ultrasound guidance shows complete occlusion of superficial femoral veins, common femoral vein, and external and common iliac veins at the left side. You see large thrombus burden in left leg and catheter injection in iliac veins shows occlusion of common iliac veins and some collaterals. Perfusion catheter for catheter direct thrombolysis was placed from superficial femoral vein to common iliac vein and injection by perfusion catheter shows the large burden of clot and total occlusion. 24 hours of catheter directed thrombolysis and about 24 mg of alteplase shows partial patency of common femoral vein and iliac veins. However, the left common iliac veins has still severe stenosis. Ballooning with 8 mm and 16 mm balloons, high pressure balloons was down especially at the ostal portion of left common iliac vein and venous stenting by sinus venous stents 16 mm and 14 mm stents as you see was done however we were concerned about relatively poor inflow to the stent at this point we could leave the patient and make some follow-ups by clinics and Doppler you know, or do something else. As you know, poor inflow to the stent is a strong predictor of stent occlusion. We did several injections to assess the inflow to the stent. Due to a sluggish flow of the stent, uh, we decided to continue catheter direct thrombolysis for another 24 hours. We did uh, CDT again and we put perfusion catheter again within the stent and injection shows sluggish flow. We assess the patient after 24 hours. The inflow is much more better. The speed of flow is faster. And now I can be sure that the stent will stay patent. In summary, poor inflow to iliac vein stents may lead to venous occlusion and secondary catheter-directed thrombolysis after venous stenting might be a viable option to improve inflow and stent patency. In acute deep vein thrombosis, further investigation needs to confirm safety and efficacy of this concept that is catheter-directed thrombolysis, stenting and again uh, catheter-directed thrombolysis continuation. Thanks for your watching.